what's going on guys welcome to another epic video this time we're gonna be creating a rom-com look it's very appropriate because this is the season when we get a lot of comedy or romantic comedy movies there's a lot of little details that you have to pay attention to because you can very easily make it look super cheap like if you just crank the saturation and contrast and think that that's it so you're gonna be picking up all of those little nuances in here and i'm gonna be showing you a really cool technique that is brand new to davinci resolve so get super excited grab a notepad and for those that want to level up their color grading game check out the link in the description one hour long free training where i will show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your sony s-log 8-bit footage how to get the clean white look it's the go-to commercial look how to get the creamy film look how to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much much more link is in the description guys if you're enjoying the content you know what to do smash that like button subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness make sure to follow me on instagram let's roll the intro All right, so let's analyze this image really quick and see how we're going to be accomplishing this rom-com look. So the first thing that I see is right here. This area is too hot. So we have to bring it down so our focus still stays on the face. And just look at how saturated this entire image is once we start adding global saturation, which means we have to be selective where we want to put emphasis when it comes to the chroma values. And then finally, what we need to do is we basically need to take everything that is in the middle and lift it up. And that is the actual sauce when it comes to creating rom-com look. Everything in the lower mids is lifted. It has a lot of contrast, but these values right here are usually lifted. Okay, so let's just jump right in. And as always, we're going to start off with building our node tree. So the first node is going to be my temp and tint. Then I'm going to create a new node. This one is going to be my primaries. I'm going to create another node. And then this is going to be my sat versus luminance. This is a new feature in DaVinci Resolve 17. And I'm going to go ahead and create another node. This one, we're going to call it red. And then I'm going to create a parallel node. And this one, I'm going to call it yellow. And uh, let's, yeah, so they're looking good. Let's keep them there. And then I'm going to create another node. I'm going to pull this down here and we're going to call this vignette and I'm going to create another one. This is going to be our global adjustment and we're going to have some finishing nodes. So this is going to be our glow and then final node is going to be our grain. So it's a 10 node node tree. But again, forget about these, right? These are just finishing nodes. So really this whole grade is going to be done in about eight nodes. Okay. So let's go back to our main node, which is going to be our primary node. And I'm going to start off by cranking some contrast in. So let's go too far, obviously, and then pull it back. And then now what I want to do is I want to raise my gamma up. Remember, I said, like, we got to bring these values up. And then I'm going to take my gain and bring it down. Okay, to kind of make up for it. Again, gamma up, gain down. And then let's go back into contrast and give it more contrast. And then park it somewhere around here, gain up a little bit, something like that. And then gamma up a little bit. Okay. And now just let's give it some saturation. So I'm not going to go too far this time because this image is very saturated. So we're going to keep it. I'm basically just judging how much saturation I want based on her face. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. So if we do before and after, I mean, a lot was done in this one node. Okay. So let's go into our temp and tint. One thing that I noticed, which we can even attest to right here in our vector scope, look at the center point and how the image is kind of falling on the right side and down here, which means there's more magenta in our image and a little bit more blue than having it quote unquote neutral or maybe a little bit more on the warm side. And one thing you need to realize is that when it comes to happy or poppy holiday season look, Usually it's on the warm side. So I'm going to start cranking my temp to bring that warmth. Always go too far and then kind of dial it back. And then I'm going to take my tint and I'm going to take some of that red out and just take it towards green. Again, too far and then pull it back. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. And then I'm going to dial back my warmth a little bit. 
And now if I do before and after, I mean, look at the amount of difference we made. But I'm going to kind of split the difference. I'm not going to go that far. Like I'm almost using her shoes as like my white balance point, you know, almost. And then in our sat versus luminance, I'm going to go right here. And this is the sauce, okay? I'm going to take my shadow areas, my darker areas, and I'm going to lift them up a little bit. I'm going to take my brighter areas, and I'm going to bring them down a little bit. So look at the difference that this one node makes. I mean, just look at this and what it's doing. Like, it's cr almost creating, like, a very subtle bleach bypass effect, but... Look at the amount of pop we generated by just doing this. Guys, this is a very powerful tool, but you have to be very careful how you use it. So I used it how it's meant to be used. I mean, just look at the detail we popped out in her face. Like, look at the book, how everything just kind of became three-dimensional, to be honest with you. Like, look at these white lines in the carpet. Everything just pops so much by doing so little. Okay, and look at the detail we have in the dress now, right? So that change is out of control. I mean, it made a huge, huge difference. Now I'm going to go under my red. And usually, you know, I'm a big fan of using vectors, but I don't want to do that. It's going to grab her lips and it's going to grab her face. So I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under my vector uh, or I'm going to go under my qualifier and I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to see what it's selecting. So let's go ahead and open it up a little bit. So we're going to open it up and then I'm going to go and just add a little bit of denoise, not too much, okay? I don't want a lot of halo. And then I'm going to go under saturation and I'm going to just dial it back and uh, kind of keep it somewhere around here. So when you mute these colors out and then have some colors that are popping, it really creates that Wes Anderson look, you know? So this is pretty good. I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. So that really evens everything out. And then I'm going to go under my yellow and uh, same thing. Okay. I'm going to just go do this and then I'm going to see what it's selecting. I'm going to open it up. I'm not going to grab her skin. So I'm going to keep it somewhere around here. I'm going to denoise it and I'm going to come back out and uh, I'm going to do two things. So I'm going to start off with my highlights. I'm going to pull my highlights down to kind of, you know, take some of the sting out. And then I'm going to take some of the color out too. Maybe not a lot of the color, to be honest. Like, I think the highlights just did the trick. It kind of took the edge off, right? Like, I mean, it's just too in your face, and then it kind of brings it down. So this does it for me. I don't mind that at all. We might have to make some changes to it when we add our glow, but for now, it's fine. I'm going to go under my vignette, add a window. I'm going to change the aspect, obviously. Rotate it. And this is all I'm doing, okay, with the window. Like, I just want to kind of keep it like this. Add a lot of softening and then invert it. And then once it's inverted, I'm going to go under my curves and I'm going to turn off editable splines. I'm just going to kind of go aggressive. Just be kind of aggressive with it because it's stylized, right? Like, I mean, we're going for that specific look. So it's totally fine. I'm just going to kind of crush it. Uh, maybe bring it up a little bit, something like that. And then for the global adjustment, what I want to do is I want to go under my log wheels. I'm going to take my shadows and I'm going to just pull it down. And I'm going to go under my low range and I'm going to control it. So let's just do this and then maybe bring it up. Keep it somewhere around here. So if I do before and after, like it takes a lot of the, actually, let me do this. And then bring it down. Or something like that. I mean, it adds a lot of contrast. A lot, Like, see, it's doing a lot, okay? It's adding a lot of pop, which I'm a fan of. So I'm going to leave it actually somewhere around here. I'm liking it. And then let's go under our glow. I'm going to go under my open effects, add glow. And then we're going to change the composite mode to soft light. And then I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Open it up all the way. I'm going to go under my spread and uh, I'm going to see where I want to keep that. So let's go here and then I'm under my blend. I'm going to split the difference. So I'm going to open this up so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm going to come back 
and kind of do something like that, like almost 50%. And then let's take my brightness and mess with it. I'm going to do that. What's really going to help sell this effect is going to be the use of a Luma qualifier. I'm going to add a lot of softening here. And basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to restrict what I want to affect. I do not want to affect any highlights or these bright areas. So this helps me accomplish that. Okay, so like look at the effect that we're making. It's all right here. It's leaving this alone, okay? And what I can do is like now maybe I can reset the blend so we can really see the difference that we're making. And it's quite a bit. Like, I mean, look at this. So guys, these are the things that you got to do to make your image pop. And especially remember I was saying like we got to take the midtones and we got to pull them up. These are all the little trickery that you have to do to make that happen. And again, I'm explaining this, so it's taking time. But when you're creating this look, it's not going to take this long. And you can just like really turn and burn when you're working on something like that. So I'm going to go back in my brightness and see if it's too much, if we're just pushing it a bit much. I'm going to go up there and then I'm going to try to blend it in a little bit. And if we do that, it's adding the right amount of pop that I'm looking for. I can also go back in here and then kind of move this around to see if I want to affect more or less or something like that. So maybe something like this is really doing it for me. That's a happy medium. And then for finally, we're going to go under our grain. This time I'm going to not go with the 35 millimeter. I'm going to go with 16 millimeter reversal. And then I'm going to go give it a little bit more grain size. And then under my strength, I'm really going to crank it because I'm trying to go for like that. Again, Wes Anderson, like really cool, old school film look, if you will. I, I want to go back in my red and kind of just mute it a little bit more. Because I feel like that just gives it a really cool look. OK, so if I do before and after, you see the difference, right? And then I think what we can do is. Try to spread it out. So let me see what I can do. I don't want to grab her skin, obviously. So even something like that. And let's split the difference. So yeah. So I mean, just look at look at that, right? Like I mean, it just makes it look so much like film. But you have to be careful because, like, look at this up there. Like we're kind of cracking it, right? So. Here is where you have to kind of find that right balance, like something like this. It's blending in so much better, like all of it. So you kind of have to be careful with that. And if it becomes like a problem, then obviously just go with the vector um, route and then everything is going to be fine. But I think for me, this helps quite a bit. The yellow did its job as well. And then our grain and everything. So, I mean, where we started to where we ended up, let's just kill everything. And uh, I'm going to start with my primaries. So that was the first move. Then we went and warmed up our image and then showed you a brand new technique that is new to DaVinci Resolve and then uh, selected my red and like really damage control that red and brought our yellow down a little bit, added a vignette and then global adjustment to keep that contrast present and then glow did quite a bit. And then this is our grain right here. And one more thing that we can do that I'm just looking at right now is that I can click right here, create another node, and then let's hide this, put this there. And then this could be our pop. And then one thing that I can do in this particular node is Turn on my editable splines under custom curves. Click right here and then try to raise that. And let's see. So even if I just bring it up some to something like that, again, it's up to you, right? I mean, to me, this is looking totally fine. But if you want to bring it up, you can do that. Also for the vignette that we created here, we can kind of move it around because ultimately what I want to do is I want to keep a lot of the emphasis on the face and then I can move this right here. And even the vignette, right? Like, I mean, if this gets to be a bit too much where you're just like, all right, dude, this is just a bit too extreme. 
we can split the difference, right? We can bring some of that detail back. But for me, I think I like kind of just keeping the focus right here. So again, guys, where we started to where we ended up. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of the pop node, so I'm going to keep that off. But again, like I said, it's totally up to you. You have that option if you want to use it. But for me, I think it works much better without it. So now let's just do one more thing. I want to go under my global adjustment and I want to see if I'm grabbing her face. I'm not. So, okay, everything is good. Let's check out the final look in full screen. So as always, the way I build these looks, you guys know that you can save it as a power grade and then apply it on your next project that requires something similar to this. If you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Do not forget to check out the training. Link is in the description. One hour long training that is absolutely free. It will take you from not knowing anything about Resolve to be grading your first professional gig. On that note, I will see you guys in the next video.